Welcome to the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi, Ghana. The Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology is Ghana's foremost university of science and technology with a mission to provide an environment for teaching, research and entrepreneurship training in science and technology for the industrial and socio-economic development of Ghana, Africa and other nations. And welcome to KNUST's Department of Chemistry. With a student population of about 750, it is the largest department of chemistry in the country and one of the largest on the African continent. With a mandate to train students in all aspects of the chemical sciences and conduct cutting edge research, the department runs a four year Bachelor of Science degree program at the undergraduate level and the two-year Master of Philosophy and three-year Doctor of Philosophy degrees in all the traditional branches of chemistry, including organic, inorganic, analytical, environmental, and physical and computational chemistry. Our research covers all the traditional as well as new and emerging areas of chemistry. This is the Computational Chemistry Center of the Department of Chemistry. The Centre is a molecular and materials modelling facility dedicated to the development and application of state-of-the-art computational chemistry techniques to study the chemical and physical behaviour of molecules and materials for applications in a wide range of areas. These include the development of homogeneous catalysts that can perform chemical transformations with high efficiencies and selectivities thereby reducing energy consumption and production of harmful byproducts. Development of novel transition metal catalysts that can efficiently convert carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases to useful fuels, thereby tackling the problems of energy and climate change. Development of new drug molecules and vehicles to fight diseases and improve quality of life. The development of environmentally friendly, sustainable and cost-effective energy alternatives. And the development of functional materials for a variety of applications. Here in the Conventional Chemistry Laboratory, our research focus is in two broad areas of computational chemistry. We are looking at molecular modeling, where we'll focus on the mechanisms of organic and organic metallic reactions. And we're also looking at computational material science. In the computational material science, we are looking at uh, basically um, heterogeneous catalysis, and uh, we're looking at band gap engineering. We're looking at functional materials for all sorts of applications, graphics and stuff like that. In the organometallic reactions and organic reactions, we're looking at um, essentially a homogeneous catalyst for various industrial processes as well as um, what, what you might call physical organic chemistry, the uh, mechanisms of certain interest in organic reactions. Computational materials research is an interdisciplinary area. Current research endeavors can be categorized into three broad areas first of them being renewable energy materials and this interest is because of the increasing levels of carbon dioxide gas and the need to reduce co2 emissions and move to renewable energy materials and so i my group and i try to find new materials and more efficient materials that can convert carbon dioxide gas into fuels and aromatics which are useful chemicals and we also consider fuel cell materials, how to enhance those to improve their efficiency. And we also look at uh, water splitting to produce hydrogen fuel. We are also interested in other heterogeneous processes that occur. For example, lignin conversion or valorization into useful compounds. And then in the second group, we also look at immobilization of harmful chemicals that exist in the environment. Secondly, I also look at corrosion science because one of the technological challenges that is faced in the steel industry um, is that there's 
persistence of corrosion, especially in acidic media. So we try to look at means of reducing corrosion by alloying and the likes. And then finally, the current research we are looking at is the band gap engineering of photocatalysts to be able to harness solar energy and to produce materials that are used for to generate energy from the sun. But how did the computational chemistry center come into being? In 1990, a young man had a dream, and with the support of his mentors, he proceeded to the University of California at Irvine to study under the tutelage of one of the leading computational chemists in the world at the time, Professor Warren J. Harry. Upon his return to Ghana, a lack of facilities kept him inactive in his field for over a decade. When the government of Ghana instituted the Teaching and Learning Innovation Fund, he applied and got a grant of 184,000 US dollars. That was a lot of money. He recruited a young man who also had a dream, and together they set out bringing this dream into reality. One invoice at a time, one transition state at a time. The rest, as they say, is history. Currently, some aspects of the laboratory's research is funded by the UK's Royal Society through the Leverhulme and DFID grants. Research activities in the laboratory at present time fall under two broad areas, namely molecular modeling and materials modeling. In molecular modeling, our focus has been on exploring the mechanisms of organic, inorganic, and organometallic reactions. These studies afford important molecular level mechanistic details of industrially relevant chemical reactions that are difficult, if not impossible, to obtain experimentally. Molecular level understanding enable chemical reactions to be guided quickly and efficiently along desirable pathways with the effect of producing the right product with minimal energy consumption and minimal environmental impact. A key aspect of this work is the development of homogeneous transition metal catalyst for the depolymerization of lignin, an abundant natural resource for fuel. PhD, first year PhD student. Uh, um, my research is on the homogeneous catalyzed cleavage of aerial ethers found in and aerial ethers found in lignin. Lignin is a is a component of lignocellulosic biomass, and we're looking at how to break down lignin into um, value-added products such as fuels and chemicals. So I am studying the the mechanism of how lignin is cleaved or the aerial ethers in lignin is cleaved using a base catalyst as well as a transition metal catalyst. Hi, my name is Grace Ahem. I'm in final year and I'm currently working on a mechanistic study on one three dipolar cycle addition reaction CN disaccharide nitrone with norbonadiene derivatives. Products from these reactions are very useful in organic synthesis and in drug design, I've gained a lot of experience and then skills that I think will personally help me in grad school, which I hope will be soon. My name is Eric Notti Thompson, I'm a final year chemistry student. I'm working on the reaction of um, nobonadines with 1,3 dipoles. Um, the reaction seeks to give root to the stereo and radio selective synthesis of uh, several synthetically and pharmaceutically important structures in organic, in organic and natural product chemistry. However, um, little is known about the source of the stereo and the radio selectivities as um, proposed by Christina and co-workers in 1981. My work is focused on a DFT mechanistic study um, that has to do with the um, transition metal catalyzed dye in a cyclolysomerization reaction. In materials modeling, 
Our focus has been on the computer-aided design of materials for heterogeneous catalysis. The atomic and molecular level mechanistic insights gained from these studies are useful for the design of novel catalysts for the conversion of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases as well as stranded gases from petroleum refining into useful fuels. This addresses the problem of global warming as well as providing an environmentally friendly alternative source of fuel. My name is Nana Malkmeda and I'm a final year undergraduate student taking my project in this lab. Um, my work is focused on the conversion of carbon dioxide into useful fuels on metal and non-metal to titanium dioxide. Currently, we collaborate with other research groups, both computational and experimental, in Africa and abroad. These include the University College London, Cardiff University, the University of Johannesburg, the University of Botswana, the University of Namibia, and the Botswana International University of Science and Technology. Our overall aim is to continue to make this place a conducive environment for learning, research, and discovery in computational chemistry for our students and collaborators. I have worked in this lab now for about four years, four to five. Actually, when I was an undergrad, I did my project here, uh, my final year thesis project here and then I came back for graduate school I did three years of masters and now I'm a first year PhD student so altogether five years it's very comfortable place to learn it's where you would definitely learn not just about the science or the chemistry you definitely like get to learn about life and for me especially with my graduate studies here the learning has been more about myself how I have grown as a person individually and even the science I have been able to learn so much in as an adult because I, I would literally say I've spent my my the first stage of my adult years here it's for the science as well they are very very equipped to teach you the science and as you can see I enjoy um, a, a, it's a peaceful environment to work in it's a cozy comfortable environment to work in as well so this has mainly been my experience so far has been good my experience here has been so amazing. I've learned a lot from my supervisors and my friends and also the graduate students here. Um, actually, I want to further into computational chemistry at the graduate school. So, um, so far down here, I mean, work has been very phenomenal. Um, I must say that the instructors here give constructive criticisms that always put us on our toes. And um, as we do here, we read a lot have to be on top of literature and so it has actually helped me to sort of widen my scope of thinking and how I actually see problems and stuff like that. Um, working in this lab has been totally amazing because um, I've had the opportunity to meet with um, people who are working in this field as well in materials modeling, people who are working in uh, molecular modeling as well and Aside the aside learning the technicalities involved in what I do, I've also been able to study other fields as well. Doing computational chemistry is is really um, is really broad. It's been interesting, um, even though a bit hectic, but it's interesting. It's also fun, and then I'm gaining more knowledge every day. Some of the alumni of the center are pursuing postgraduate studies in computational studies in various top tier universities in the world. One of these is Samuel Bakwain, who graduated from this lab in 2016. Samuel has followed the footsteps of his academic grandfather back to the University of California. My name is Samuel Bakwain, and I'm a first year PhD student at the University of California, Irvine. Um, I graduated with a BSc in Chemistry from KNUST. Currently, I'm working in the lab of uh, Professor Philip Furke, um, who does electronic structure calculation. Right from the onset, from the beginning of first year in my undergraduate um, program at KNUST, 
my lecturers did not just teach me chemistry, but they inspired me and taught me how to think on my own, um, how to solve problems, how to do research. For people like Professor Iman Sade and Dr. Richard Sia, for most of the time um, during lectures, I just sit down and not listening to what they are saying, but in my head I'll go like, how do these people know these things? And all I'm thinking about is, how can I be like them? The academic staff of the Department of Chemistry at KNUST is one of the finest, I must say. Our long-term aim is to build a computational chemistry laboratory which is comparable to any in the world. You know it's going to take a lot of effort, you know it's going to take a lot of hard work, but it's something we have been doing and we do everything in our capacity to.